Okay, how's everyone doing? I hope you are all doing well. So this week the video may look a little bit different because I'm using uh, some application. OBS doesn't seem to be responding, so I'm still going to make a video. So first of all, before I get started, please go to my Odyssey. I have actually more videos on Odyssey than I do on YouTube. So check out my Odyssey. Please subscribe. Say hello. I'd like to get to 100 uh, subscribers on Odyssey uh, just to start with. That would be very nice. So please, if you would, go to Odyssey. Now, this week, I'm talking about the God problem. What is the God problem? Well, you know, in this entire year, it's been kind of a philosophical uh, exercise in just kind of really putting ideas out there, not really necessarily having a fixed conclusion, but really just exploring some of the things I've been thinking about and then seeing what you guys have to say, uh, sometimes responding to your comments and, of course, reading your comments and getting feedback, getting ideas for things to talk about. So thank you very much. Um, this has been a... Uh, very interesting and enlightening dialogue so far. So now lately I've been thinking about the what I would characterize as the God problem. And what I mean by that is, you know, there seem to be those of us who are okay with an idea that um, there is an all-pervading, uh, you know, God-like figure. Okay, for me, it's an all-pervading consciousness um, that is God for me. Okay, now there's uh, more to it that I couldn't possibly articulate in any kind of language. Um, that is more of a feeling. It's more of a knowing. It's more, you know, it's it's a deeply personal thing. And so I'm the last person to go running around telling people, "Hey, you need to do it this way." Right? That's what a religion is. And to me, that doesn't work. Now, I do rail on religions a lot, and I talk about how, you know, religion is just the business of spirituality, which I made a video about, and I really believe that is the case. However, uh, some people do choose religion, and they need that sort of structure, and that's okay. I'm not saying the people that are religious, you know, are somehow bad people, or, you know, that's all nonsense. But I'm saying the institutional thinking, the religious uh, institutions that lead to the institutional sort of thought where you're just basically painting by numbers and you're following a script that someone provided to you that created this religion many years ago, centuries ago. You're just kind of going along with that sort of program, but you're not really going any deeper than that. Um, that is kind of where the institutions fall down always. They kind of, um, you know, institutions are just where amazing good ideas just go to die. They just go into these institutions and they're abused and administrated to death and committee meetings and all sorts of things happen. And eventually the idea, uh, the essence of it is dead. Although, interestingly enough, the idea never dies. And it's just the institutions that seem to rise and fall, isn't it? Um, the ideas are actually eternal, and you can't kill them uh, no matter how hard you try. So if you think that, um, you know, religion is dead and dying, you're absolutely right. But do you think, uh, if you think God is dead, uh, or you think the notion um, of a divine creator or an all-pervading consciousness, okay, is falling out of favor, well, you're um, not correct on that because... You know, it's the institutions. People confuse the institution with the idea, okay? And uh, rightly so. I mean, you know, the institution becomes the um, front man, okay, for the idea. And it's always that way. But if you can kind of in your mind understand that you have this um, idea or you have this this notion that you can investigate for yourself, okay, and come into close personal contact with that, okay? You can just do that for yourself. You don't have to start a big club about it. You don't have to start running around recruiting members, monetizing it, killing other people that don't agree with you, right? That's, uh, that's not what I'm talking about. So the God problem is this. The God problem is this idea that... Um, you know, we as human beings, we are this like sort of individuated 
you know, unit of consciousness. Think of every person as just an individuated unit of consciousness. And we're surrounded by millions and billions of other people on this little blue speck, as Carl Sagan um, so wonderfully described it in his series Cosmos, if you've seen that, the original. Um, we're on this little blue speck, and if you expand outward into the cosmos, I would presume it expands it's to such a magnitude that just baffles the comprehension of human, the human mind to such a degree that, you know, our planet itself uh, could just, for practical reasons, just might as well even not exist, and, and that wouldn't really have any bearing on the overall uh, scale that we're talking about, this infinite or near infinite or whatever you want to think, however you want to think about it. Wherever the ends of the universe are, if there even is an end, um, you know, the scale is just mind-boggling and it's beyond all human comprehension, et cetera, et cetera. Now, we have this interesting uh, inclination as human beings, as individuated units of consciousness, that we don't want to die, right? We don't like the idea that we're going to die. And, you know, if you think about what it means to be a human being and, and exploring in life and growing and being, you know, a, a, a true sort of student of life and, and really, you know, we, we want to at least in the ideal sense of what it means to be human, we want to continue to grow and to expand. And that idea, you know, comes into, you know, popular culture with things like, you know, Star Trek when, when you have this like space exploration and you're expanding and expanding. Well, that really is a uh, sort of a, analogous to the expansion of consciousness of the mind. And so the thought, the reason that you are... Um, and, and we all are contending with the, the um, logical conclusion to our lives, which is death. The reason we don't like that idea is because there's some essence in us that is eternal, just like the ideas that I'm talking about, the ideas that form um, institutions, okay? Because institutions come along, they're, they're, they have to be built up around an idea that people can get, you know, that is a good idea that has proven itself over, you know, it's, that has stood the test of time. And people uh, create these institutions and then, uh, you know, they monetize it and there's all this kind of stuff happening. And a few people at the top want to run everything and that's kind of the society we live in. However, now, um, when we're talking about expanding, now, we're expanding, you know, we want to expand our consciousness, right? Or at least we should as we're growing. And that seems a fundamental pattern of the universe, right? The expansion we know the universe is expanding, for example. And our and it's a funny thing because our consciousness can keep expanding. The brain can keep growing. We can keep learning. But the body is this ephemeral thing. And eventually, it's going to wear out. We're going to die, right? And so we have a conflict here because there's an essence uh, about us that doesn't seem like... There's an essence in us that does seem eternal, doesn't it? And so you could... You could all you could think of the body as sort of like this institution that's built up around this idea, okay? And it, it wouldn't be um, if you can wrap your head around that, and especially to my intuitive uh, viewers out there, I think you can probably, you know, catch what I'm. Uh, you, you can you can catch what I'm what I'm trying to um, articulate here. And again, this is just kind of a this is kind of just an idea that I've been playing with lately, but. You know, this sense that, you know, this sense of um, that we're going to die and we don't we don't really like this sense. Well, if you th think about it this way, if you have an eternal essence to you, OK, whatever that essence is, I'm not you know, I'm not uh, going to put a label on it as far as any one religion or whatever. OK, whatever that essence is, if you feel like you have some sort of eternal essence or you know, that's probably why you're conflicted. That's probably why we are all conflicted about dying, okay? Because logically, we know we're going to die. And if logically, if logically now, we knew that we were just a carbon-based machine and really consciousness was just some sort of afterthought of, you know, it was just... Um, you know, a sort of result of our biology and that there was nothing more to it than that. If we really, truly believe that, if we really, truly believe such a notion, right, then 
death wouldn't be such a um it wouldn't be such a boogeyman to everyone it wouldn't be such a taboo thing to talk about or to think about it wouldn't be that at all it would actually be quite normalized right but people are highly conflicted with death and why is that it's because we do have an essence we do have this some sort of eternal essence i can't explain it um but you can feel it and that you know you have an eternal essence that feels like it's trapped in a body that has a expiry date right so it's a funny little situation that we found ourselves in that you know you have this sort of um and you know you can you can just look out into uh you can look at the stars at night and you can you can see the expanse right of the cosmos right there in front of you and so this is something that and, and you can be in nature and you can feel you can feel this sort of connection and I mean, without n nature, of course, is the support system for, uh, you know, our planet is this, it has this support system. And when people say, you know, like nature doesn't care about you, I heard that the other day on the radio and I thought, well, that's kind of, that's kind of an ignorant statement because if nature didn't care about you, you wouldn't be alive on this planet in the first place. It wouldn't support life at all. And it's not a matter of care in the sense that, you know, in the human sense of caring, Okay, it's more in the sense of supporting the idea. Okay, and what supports an idea are institutions. Well, you know, you could even say the planet is an institution. The sun is an institution. Okay, what that means is it's a it's a crystallized manifestation of something that has an essence that came before it. That you know, this essence is what is the first cause or actually I, I would even say the second cause i'm not going to give away uh the first first cause necessarily because we don't really want to we don't want to go that deep yet but if you think about the institutions okay the man-made institutions okay well what it is is it's it's sort of like a framework or a placeholder for an idea okay it's a placeholder for an essence and in, in other words right Everything's an idea, okay? And behind um, behind every institution, every framework, every mountain, every uh, ocean, river, um, forest, people, all those things, there is a certain essence that gives it form, okay? We don't know what that essence is. Uh, we can try to reduce it down um, sort of logically and, and go that route if we want to do that. However, you know, that's not really what I'm talking about. I'm just talking about on an intuitive basis. If you think about the fact that, you know, you are this individuated sort of unit of consciousness amongst a sea of individuated unit of consciousness, you know, which are people, and then you're on this planet and you're in this large, you know, amazing cosmos, okay? And you know, integrally, you have some part, you know, some sort of connection to all of it okay even even at a molecular level we can say things are made of the same stuff but then even then you know every what is it like three to four years or something the subatomic uh, particles that make up your body aren't even the same anymore so everything's uh, shifting with this sort of process that's happening and so who you are physically isn't even who you are so what I'm saying is there is, and scientifically we know already that, you know, pretty much everything's just empty space. So it's, is it really that much of a leap to, to understand that consciousness is actually the a priori cause of structure of, you know, uh, you could say institutions, for example, um, an idea and consciousness, you know, they're pretty interrelated and your consciousness would be supernal to that or be a priori to that but then you know the idea um kind of uh unfolds right and maybe a fibonacci sort of sequence right and it crystallizes into a material form is what i'm saying so think about that reflect on that if you have any questions um this is again this is just something that i've been uh thinking about a lot in terms of why you know why are people so resistant to the idea of god now i understand if you think of god in the institutional sense of like the religious uh people that run around and are just 
just insufferable and you don't want to hear them and they seem disingenuous, I agree with you 100%. But if you think logically, scientifically, okay, about the 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 uh, very uh, notion that I'm talking about, and if you think and analyze and reflect on this, um, you know, how reality actually operates as far as we know scientifically and how it's already been, you know, intuited spiritually and how those are reconciled, if you can really reflect on that, then I don't think there's a God problem at all because, you know, we can um, wrap our minds around this idea that we don't know anything and we really don't, right? And that it's okay to not know everything. It's okay. And it's even okay to not know there's a God. It's okay. uh, If you don't think there's a God, that's fine. But that usually depends on whether or not you even like the idea. And so that's irrelevant as far as I'm concerned. It's, it's a mat, It's not a matter of like or dislike, right? I don't like. I don't like this. You know, a lot of people will adopt ideas simply because they like them, right? Or they'll learn new things and they'll just believe any kind of crap because the person telling them they happen to like. Well, don't do that. That's just stupid. Okay. So what I'm talking about is just reflect for yourself. Okay. I'm not trying to tell you. You know, you need to think the way I think, and and this is you know. Um, you know, because I would just be institutionalizing uh, my thoughts here and trying to uh, just get you to, you know, sort of just uh, gobble up what I'm saying and just believe it and run around and and just be a little tape recorder, um, just repeating what someone else said. Okay, that's that's not the whole, um, you know, that's not the point to this entire uh, to this entire exercise here. It's to get you reflecting and thinking about. Uh, the essence of reality and this this so-called uh, God problem. So let me know your thoughts. You guys have a wonderful uh, week, and I'll see you next time.